All right, so this one is for the girls who get it and the girls who don't get it, hopefully you will after this video. I feel comfortable using legal jargon in everyday life. I object. Hey gay people. Are you gay? I am. So you agree? What? You think you're really pretty. Don't be don't fucking do rude. Are you kidding me? Oh. Hello? That was a stop sign? I totally paused. Hey, dumpster divers, and welcome back to the doll daddy. And for anybody new here, welcome. So dumpster divers are what I like to call my subscribers. So if you want to be a dumpster diver, go ahead and subscribe. But basically, because my content is hot garbage and I'm basically a dumpster fire, uh, people who actively seek out my content are dumpster divers. You can always unsubscribe later unless, you know, you want to be like homophobic or something, which... So today we're going to try and navigate what is the Barbie core aesthetic. Like, is it just pinks and purples? Is it just being a baddie? Is it just bimbo? Like, is there more depth to it? Not so much, etc. And I kind of fit into the aesthetic of Barbie core, like a little bit mixed in with like mermaid core. Um, I'm gay. Um, I like stuff like this, pink. So join me as we try and figure out what is Barbie core and how we can kind of pin it down. Barb's origins. So in order for us to kind of understand Barbie core, we also need to understand old Barb's. Where did she come from? Where is she going? What was she doing? All this stuff. So basically, I'm just gonna give you like a quick rundown. There's a lot more information, nuance and everything, but this is just like a quick rundown of old Barb's. So back in the day, Ruth Handler, who was married to Elliot Handler, one of the co-founders of the Mattel co toy company, um, realized that her daughter, who would play with like paper dolls and everything, liked them because they could dress up in like fashions and go and do careers and like cosplay and stuff like that. And it was way more interesting than like the standard baby dolls and everything that you would see on the toy market mostly. Also, she lied to her shareholders and I don't know why, but I think that's so like girl boss pussy slay. Well, Ruth came across the German call girl, Bild Lily, who was a fun, sexy, flirty girl and usually given as like a gag gift at stag parties and everything, which a stag party is kind of like a bachelor party. But Ruth saw the potential in making her like this fashion doll that her daughter kind of used the role of those paper dolls for, but Barb's was more three-dimensional. So she basically stole Bild Lily, changed it up slightly and called it something new. And in 1959, at the New York Toy Fair, I believe, Mattel gave birth to Barbara Millicent Roberts, and the world was never the same. Barbie was everything girls wanted to be and should be. She was a 16-year-old fashion model who, over the next six decades, would have every single costume, piece of clothing, accessory, dream house underneath the plastic sun. And that's kind of where Barb started. But when she really became like this cultural icon, I feel like, cause she was always there, like from 1959. But when I feel like Barb's became like this just undisputable cultural icon was the, when the superstar face sculpt came out in 1977 and was used up until 1998, which I think at this point in Barb's history is the longest a face sculpt has been used, because that would be 21 years, I believe. And the superstar face sculpt was immortalized in Andy Warhol's 1986 painting, Billy Boy, thus thrusting Barbie into the cultural zeitgeist even more and making her synonymous with everything that is pink, glamour, and camp. And this is important to remember when we're remembering the Barbie core aesthetic, because the 90s use the superstar face sculpt and the 90s and the Y2K are almost exclusively Barbie core. Totally Y2K know your aesthetic. <gasps> so why don't we just Google the first thing that comes up for the Barbie core aesthetic? Back to the computer. Oh my gosh, I'm such a nerd. Let's see if I got any new comments. Oh man. So the first one to come up is 
Head to toe pink. What is Barbie core? In short, Barbie core is what it sounds like. Head to toe pink. Super simple explanation. But let's look up another definition just in case. What is Barbie core? Barbie core essentially refers to the epitome of Barbie's style. Hot pink, bright neons, feminine makeup, and sparkly accessories. With the return of Y2K fashion, thrifting trending across social media, and people praising the 90s, the Barbie girl aesthetic is back. So we're kind of seeing a theme here, like sparkly pink, feminine, just everything that is Barbie. And I think one of the biggest things is the Y2K 90s aesthetic. When I look at every single form of Barbie core, whether it's like a 10% or like 110%, it's always very Y2K 90s and I'm in love with it. Like vintage fashion forward, babes. Okay, so vintage by definition is anything that's 25 years old but then cycles back through like fashion and culture. So like your 2001 Bratz doll or your 2004 Mycene Barbies are considered vintage at this point. Shrek is considered vintage at this point, which that's like a whole different kind of Barbie core aesthetic if you want to be like the Princess Fiona of the group. So when we're considering some of the fashion bullet points of the Barbie core aesthetic, these are just some of the themes that constantly pop up throughout every list or guide or Pinterest board that I've seen. Holographic, all of the pinks, purples, lavenders, pastels, crop tops, baby tees, low-rise jeans, mini skirts, and then anything from like fast fashion all the way up into like runway. So you can go from like a sheen budget all the way to like Moschino and Valentina, which all of these fashion things are fine, but I'm like a t-shirt and shorts kind of girl. But if there's one thing I'm a huge slut for, it's accessories. And that's where I feel like my Barbie core aesthetic really pushes itself. If it's pink, I love it. So obviously some of these bullet point accessories would be stuff like anything pink, obby. Vintage, electronics, pink, blue, purple, otherwise like any kind of like typography jewelry. And then sometimes there's a splash, but it's not overwhelmingly like rainbow, unicorn, mermaid, fantasy, whimsy kind of a thing. Obviously butterfly hair clips and other hair clips. All of the lights, anything from like fairy lights to like those RGB lights, is that what they are? Oh, he's got the LGBT lights. It's RGB, motherfucker. I don't have any because, yeah. Even those like dolphin lamps from like the 90s to 2000s, do you guys remember those? Barbie core, 100%. The cute little shoulder bags and purses. <laughs> Obviously heels and boots. And then one thing I see a lot is yassified like profile pictures of usually like iconic characters from like gay cult films or uh, cartoon characters even like. Low key and high key values for the girls. So in this section, we're just gonna talk about like some of the values of the aesthetic and everything. Um, some surface level, some not so much. There's obviously like the bimbo kind of aesthetic where it's very light and airy and like playing dumb, but really, you know, she's smart. Like uh, Jessica Simpson with the whole chicken of the sea tuna fish thing. Is this chicken what I have or is this fish? I know it's tuna, but it, it says chicken <laughs> by the sea. Camp. And people who know what camp is know what camp is. And people who don't um, show up at the Met Gala. Independence. Men in the Barbie core aesthetic are more of an accessory than anything else. They're an option. Being bossy. Knowing your worth. Sassy. I feel like sassy fits into like the Barbie core aesthetic more than like bitchy. I don't feel like Barbie core aesthetic girls are like necessarily bitchy unless like somebody else started at first. Like I feel like the Barbie core girl is 100% how they are approached and that dictates their attitude, but they're not gonna go out of their way. And the reason why is because Barbie core is girls supporting girls. Girls could mean anything from like a cishet woman 
to the gays, to anybody who identifies any way, we support them as long as they're good people. There's like dopamine dressing, which is like just dressing up for yourself and making yourself feel good. It's not for everybody else. It does attract the male gaze, but that's not who it's for, unless you're trying to steal their money, which is very Barbie core. Shopping, obviously, who doesn't like to get something nice and you know, more of that dopamine. The Barbie core aesthetic is rooted in nostalgia. It's easier to like imagine those times like playing your Nintendo 64 as like better times. Fighting the patriarchy, being beautiful inside and out, and of course self-care, whatever that may be. Sometimes it's doing like a nice charcoal mask on a Sunday, and sometimes it's shoplifting from Claire's because you're in the sixth grade and you just wanted some lip gloss or something. You can old age. So like, what happened? So why do I care about the Barbie core aesthetic now? Why is it resurfacing in social media, media everywhere? And what set it into place because of a few moving factors and a few movie factors? So obviously over the past couple of years, there's been like a resurgence in 90s and Y2K aesthetics being popular again because of fashion cycles, social media, and everything else. Us all growing up in that time period and now being adults with like sometimes disposable income because we're not having kids. And obviously one of the biggest social media platforms to help with the whole Barbie core aesthetic with like 7.5 million different videos using the hashtag Barbie core tag is TikTok. Also, some of the articles I was reading about Barbie Core were talking about like all these post pandemic influences. The Bratz 20th anniversary reproduction dolls coming out. I'm sure that set some of it into motion. And I think that's an important thing to recognize. Like, Barbie Core is Barbie Core because obviously Barbie, but like that includes Bratz girls. Even though a Bratz girl is the kind of girl to work at Waffle House, take out her earrings, fight you in the parking lot, put them back in, and then go back to serving her tables. So, obviously, one of the biggest elephants in the room that would be influencing like the trends again, fashion, everything on the runway, stuff like that would be um, the word of the new Greta Gerwig movie starring Margot Robbie as Barbie and Ryan Gosling as Ken. Which little fun fact, that movie's been being talked about for years and does anybody remember when like Amy Schumer was popular before we all realized that she stole jokes? I believe she was being considered to play Barbie in that movie, but Obviously, if you're a joke thief, as a stand-up comedian, you get called out on it and get passed up for other opportunities. The only thing I don't really like is how hard they went on an Amy, and I think it's because she's a woman, but it's not like other comics haven't been caught stealing jokes, and I feel like if they're men, they get off easier. But with the new movie, the aesthetics, all the photos that are leaking and everything, I haven't seen any dolls yet, but every time we are graced with a photo of Margot Robbie as Barbie, she looks absolutely perfect and she is very much the Barbie core aesthetic down to a T, which in itself can be problematic. So like the future of the Barbie core aesthetic. So obviously hindsight is 2020, and it's not like the Barbie core aesthetic isn't without its problems. One of those being a not so positive body standard like thin is in it's very barbie core and everything but i feel like socially there's been a shift where body positivity and the barbie core aesthetic can 100 percent coexist it is also criticized to be heavily rooted in heteronormative and western beauty ideal standards which is true almost any iconic barbie core character in like media, anything from like early 90s to like 2000s movies, or even a lot of the Barbie core aesthetic people who are still on social media today, like Paris Hilton. It's very um, default heteronormative settings. And they kind of like having their gay friends around as like accessories. The Barbie core aesthetic can also come off when I was talking about Margot Robbie as very exclusionary in that the standard is blonde, white, able-bodied and thin. Think. Tyra Banks, America's Next Top Model kind of situation. Very problematic now, but with a growing social consciousness, thanks to social media and everything else, I see and I've seen like the Barbie core aesthetic becoming more and more inclusive, but also take what I'm saying with like a grain of salt because I have the perspective of like a white cis man. 
So, like, what is barbiecore? So barbiecore is everything we've discussed and more. Barbiecore is not taking yourself too seriously, but taking social and political issues very seriously. Barbiecore, while hyper-feminine, is still genderless. And you can identify with barbiecore as your aesthetic, whether you're in it 10% or whether you're in it 100%. And that can mean anything from having a room dripping from head to toe pink or just keeping your antidepressants in a pink Altoids tin. So when I think Barbie core, I think like Mean Girls, Paris Hilton, 2004 Lindsay Lohan before she was released from her contract, My Scene Barbies. Basically, I see it as like a real life version of the Disney Channel original movie from 2000 starring Tyra Banks and Lindsay Lohan again, life size. Honestly, when I think about it, just, just think of like Lindsay Lohan in the 2000s, Lizzie McGuire, Raven Baxter, just any of the Disney Channel original girlies, Kim Possible, Starfire and Raven from Teen Titans, just any of those kind of girls. But ultimately, Barbie core is rooted in aspiration. It's all about the dream look, the dream closet, the dream lifestyle, the dream house, etc. So this is the very first time I've made like a video kind of like this. It's like a semi deep dive, like a medium dive maybe into a subject on the internet that I found fascinating. Please let me know down in the comments, like other things I should explore, how this could have gone different, etc. And for my normal audience, uh, I'll be back in like a regular video for this. But yeah, let me know what Barbie core means to you down below in the comments, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye. Oh, okay. So basically, Barbie core is just the complete opposite of what the Monster High reboot's doing right now.